Okay, let's see if we are live. Wait one second. Oh, wait. Hold on, let me finish this email. Okay, you, this is Normal McRae Hepler. Hold on, I got to finish this email. Oh. Welcome, everyone. This is Peyton Fisher, and we are on the Peyton Fisher Show. I've got McRae Hepler. Go ahead and finish your email. I'm going to no. go ahead and send this live. <laughs> so what we're doing right now How is— How do I do this live? Say that again. How do I do this live? So we're going to just copy. You're going to you're gonna click right on the Radio St. George. You're just going to scroll right down. You're going to see— uh, down here a little bit more as it's going to, as soon as we're popping up, it'll just take a minute or two to go full live and then okay. we'll go ahead and boost it off. So everyone today, it is February. Let's see. What is that? 18th. It's 2020. I've been telling a few people it's still 2019. I get corrected <laughs> every time I do that and that's okay. It so, is. So today we've got McCray Hepler with Eagle Gate title in here today. One of my biggest, I'm one of his biggest fans uh, <laughs> because he knows everything what's going on literally in Southern Utah, Washington County, everything. It's, it's I true. try. It's truly, no, you don't try, you do. There, I, <laughs> there's triers and then there's doers and you, my friend, are a serious doer. So now we are live. If you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see that. You'll just hit the copy button and we're going to we're gonna hit that live. So while- copy. Sorry, I'm new to this. You're okay. So there's a share button. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then you oh. hit copy link and you'll just go post that on your wall. And so share to, so, oh, today, share so today while, while McRae's doing that, uh, super exciting. There's some really fun things going on this week. Uh, we've got the Training for Greatness Thursday night, which we're super excited about starting at 6. Uh, and if you have questions about that, let me know down here. Call me, text me. And we'll get you taken care of. Did you get that all taken care of over there, honey? Yours? Yeah, it's good to go. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead then. McCray, why don't you give us the, – the goal here is so I have set the stage for you and set the stage for the listeners is before we go live on the radio, that that 25-ish minutes, that's going to be the, the – I don't want to say salesy type of McCray, but five, ten minutes of the salesy type. But right now I want to know who you are, why you do what you do, did you have dreams and aspirations of owning a title company <laughs> or did you have other dreams, aspirations? I mean, you're still young. Are you 30? Yeah, just 30 oh, yeah. two weeks ago. Uh, old man now. Uh, so New age bracket. Yeah. And so start talking about that. Talk about where you came from. Are you from here in St. George? Just kind of give us the whole, the down low on, on the McRae Hepler. Okay. So, and then just to get this right, this is my camera right here, right? I'm yes. looking into the camera right you there. are looking into this camera. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um, yeah, so my name is McCray Hepler. I am from here in su Southern Utah. Went to Dixie High. I went to Dixie uh, State uh, for two years. And then I was a traveling salesman for almost four years. I sold alarms with Vivint. And really, my dreams and aspirations were starting a business here in Southern Utah because I love it here. And I, uh, some of my friends have moved off because their industries aren't here or because there's just, obviously we know that either wages or opportunity in the past, which I feel like it's becoming better and better, but, I, but it's, it's been hard, um, outside of, you know, uh, certain industries and certain things here. Um, it's really hard to make a good living. Um, at least that's been the perception in the past. I feel like we're, we're definitely making progress on that, but Anyway, so my dream with that, I wasn't going to knock doors my whole life, but that's really what taught me sales, marketing. And really, I set up my first LLC when I was doing that because we were 1099 contractors. And that's just kind of what kicked me off onto the sales, marketing, business, entrepreneur. I ended up dropping school for books, um, and it was a lot of sales books, a lot of business books. And really... Wait, explain that again. You dropped school for books? I did, yeah. <laughs> Hey, tell, tell us what that means. <laughs> well, meaning, I guess, after my associate's degree, and I actually took a few classes beyond that, but um, really, I, I, not that there's anything wrong with, uh, with uh, universities or college or anything, but I just realized that I wasn't going to specialize in something and that I wanted to just be an entrepreneur. I wanted to be a business. I wanted to be in business of some kind. I just didn't know what that was going to be. So I just kept, I just started reading different books, different uh, sales books, business books, personal development books. Um, and that's really kind of what led me down the entrepreneur path. Um, 
And I, anyway, so from there, I um, still, I was in Vivint for almost four years. I actually had a, I, I partnered with one of my buddies on a gym here in St. George that we ran for a while. That was kind of my first uh, business venture. Um, I learned a lot through that. Um, okay, wait, and- time out. So ladies... McCray is extremely buff, but no. McCray, are you are you taken married? I am married, yes. Oh, okay. Sorry, beautiful ladies. wife. And if he says he's not buff, when you look at his arms, they're literally bulging out of his shirt. <laughs> no, so I don't not. know what anyone's talking no about. Way. McCray is ripped. No okay, way. Let's keep going. Not even. I wasn't the I wasn't the ripped guy. I was. He lies. Um, but anyway, so that was my first business <laughs> venture, and I I learned a lot through that. And uh, but um, it still wasn't the the business that I. Well, I guess even when I was selling for Vivint, I didn't know what business it was going to be. I okay. had no idea. Like, I just knew that it was a means to an end. I was going to sell. You, everyone knows you can make pretty good money selling door to door. And I knew that I just was kind of putting it out there that I was going to start a business here. I just didn't know what that was going to be. Okay. Um, and so the during my fourth <laughs> summer was when the opportunity to, to the opportunity arose um, to you know, start a title company. And that happened because of my mom. Uh, she had been in the business as an escrow officer working for a title company for almost 30 years. And she was in a situation where she wasn't sure what her future held. And, um, there, there was just, there was, there was change with the business that she was in, um, and uncertainty with the, with business that was coming to take that over. And I approached her and said, Hey, I want to, you know, I've been wanting to start a business here. Why don't we do it? And two months later we were up and running and that was August of 2015. And four and a half years later, uh, it's been, it's been a huge blessing for, uh, our family. So wait, so you went from conception to business in two months. Well, yeah, the idea was, so really yeah. The idea to conception or the idea to, yes, in two months. And really it was eight days from the time that we actually, so we're a net branch, which is kind of similar to a franchise okay. of Eagle Gate. We own and operate this branch down here. Okay. It was eight days that we actually heard about them to starting the business. It was Whoa. eight days. So, so you knew for six weeks that you and your mom wanted to start a business together. Yes. And then you found it eight days. You, did you go interview, say, hey, how do you guys work? And then you, bam, you make your business happen. Yeah, so basically for the first little while, I was try- I was just trying to figure out what to even do. Um, and she uh, was still working. And we had an opportunity. We had a guy come to us and say, hey, there's these guys. They're with Eagle Gate Title. They're from Salt Lake. They've been wanting to do something down here. Okay. You know, they're worth talking to. This was on like a Friday. It was either a Friday or Saturday. And then Sunday, I met with this guy. Monday, and through that week, by the by the next Monday, we were up and up and running. We had interviewed them. It was we felt like it was a great fit. Um, she, the main thing was just the how how we felt for, with them as business partners, and and they're two stand up awesome guys. And we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be where we are today without them. So it's. It's been awesome. Uh, it's been fun working as a family. My brother works with us as well. My dad is a retired school teacher. A lot of people here in town know him, and he uh, he assists us with some daily stuff. And it's it's been fun. I really enjoy it. And it's crazy that it's come to this. Like, it's, I would have never imagined it. Like you said, did I grow up with dreams and aspirations of owning a title company? My <laughs> mom worked her whole life. My whole life as in a t- for a title company I would have never in a million years I didn't even know what she actually did <laughs> before we started the business Do you still know what she does? Yes I do. <laughs> and my appreciation for her has grown tremendously even more on top of how how amazing of a mom she is, how amazing of a worker and how amaz- how knowledgeable she is is incredible. It's it's incredible. So she's amazing and we wouldn't be here without her and her hustles, her her hustle inspires everybody else to follow suit. That's so. pre- that's pretty incredible. I've I've heard that they'll answer their phone sometimes way too early and way <laughs> too late on weekends on holidays. So <laughs> try not to call these people because they'll answer way too much. We do. 
We do. So, so tell me about the dynamics of the family. So you and your mom, you, you start this business. Your little brother comes on. Does he kind of feel like, hey, I have to work for big brother? No. No, and it works. It works perfectly. Honestly, he started out as it was. It was going to be uh, at first. He was part time, and it's just grown and grown and grown into he. I mean, it's we we're we're, we're we used to share an office. Actually, I had an office. We started growing. He came into my office, so then we were we were sharing an office, and then uh, and then we actually just expanded even in, into even more office space and our office we wanted to make sure that our offices were were across from each other so we could still see and communicate with each other and um it's been really fun it's crazy that that's crazy too i mean just growing up together and uh now working together it's it's uh it's pretty crazy okay and do you are do you have more siblings nope just the two of us oh cool so it's brothers mom dad so you guys are like super tight-knit yeah do you ever have time apart yeah oh yeah we do um, I mean the weekends, me and my wife, I, I try to, I try to give the whole weekend to my wife. What's the whole um, weekend for you? S- Friday night to Sunday <laughs> night. <laughs> but Interesting. I, uh, unless I'm golfing and so sometimes I go out golfing, but okay. But yeah, so it's fun though. It's, it's been a blast. You, you made a comment to me maybe two weeks ago, I think right after Colby, uh, had passed away Yeah, and you said, uh, we were talking about how dedicated Colby was to his family. He bought a helicopter so he could be tighter with his kids. Yeah. And and I I gave you a praise of you're always on at work. How can you be on at home also? And you do you remember the comment that you made to me? No. <laughs> I remember the conversation. You you said to me that you're going to start being more like Colby and be on when you're on your family and be on when you're on work. Yes. And that that has really stuck with me. So every time I go back to work at like 7.30 or 8 o'clock at night when I know that I shouldn't be, for some reason it comes back to that conversation. I'm like, freak. I had a conversation with McCray that I have <laughs> that I'm supposed to stop working it's, at, you know, five, six, not seven. It's not, not easy. I mean, it's not easy, obviously, as a business owner and as you know, things have to get done. Um, but my wife deserves it and she I I, I need to be more like Kobe, hundred percent. Okay. If he can be if he can do that, I can do it. Anybody, any of us can do it. <laughs> yeah, having having that big of a player in the world or in the in the NBA be able to take that much time out for his kids. Every single day, pick them up from school, take them, be their coach, be their mentor. <coughs> it It's pretty, I say this to myself, it's pretty pathetic that I can't go hang out with my kids for two hours in the evenings. I agree. I'm and, always saying, oh, I'm, you know, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, which I am. I get that. But at the same time, I'm nowhere near as busy as a, as a world giant. I mean, Kobe <laughs> was a giant. He wasn't just a basketball player either. He was... He had so many different things going, and it's just that it, that honestly that that event really really hit me hard, um, and I spent about a week internalizing pretty deeply um, that uh, his life, and it's just crazy because I cheered against him my whole life, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's really cool. Well, and I and I think a lot of people, like you said, it was a love hate relationship. I love to hate him. I, I hated when he played against my team because he was so good. Yeah. So that said, so so taking a, as we learn from him, as we learn from his legacy, um, most entrepreneurs can't quite switch and just turn off the work, turn off those things. How do you see yourself in the future being able to say, okay, here's my boundaries? Or do you think you'll be able to have boundaries one day? I mean, I, I hope so. <laughs> and honestly, most people, you know, after I just need to, the biggest thing for me, there's not even a lot of people that really, that hit me up at nine o'clock at night. But the problem is, is my brain is, no. even if people, like, there doesn't, the bottom line is there shouldn't be things that need to be done that late. And although we do make <laughs> things done that late, but the biggest thing is I just need, the biggest thing is just putting the phone away. And it's, we always say it, everyone always says that we're hooked to our phones, <coughs> but in reality, I'm so hooked to my phone. That's the biggest thing is just being able to just be off my phone because it's such a it's such a habit at this point that I don't even have work coming in or things coming in or and but I'm still checking my phone because that's just the habit that I've created um, but that's the the beauty and the 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 good and the bad of cell phones these days is because I can be anywhere and be able to at least facilitate 
um, even if I can't get to something, I can facilitate somebody else doing it um, through my phone. But it's also, I mean, the bad of it is I'm just always on my phone, <laughs> you know? Okay. But I'm getting better. I feel like I'm getting better. I hope my wife feels that way too. Okay. So <laughs> so take me a little bit more back on the journey of, so so you you did you did uh, door-to-door, you started your gym, and you started the, the title company. Talk about some of the first mistakes that you guys made and a couple of the first really good choices that you made uh, as you started your career. Because it was just you and your mom first, right? Right. Did yeah. You- us with, we had, there was five total people in our organization. Okay. Um, now we're uh, about to hire our 11. So num- number 11, we'll have 11 people um, at, starting in April. Um, which has been fun to see. Um, but yeah, I mean, really the biggest thing, the mistakes that I made with, um, the gym, uh, because what I, with the gym, uh, it was a personal training gym, official strength. And, um, my, but really one of my best friends, Kate Cowden, he's still training. He does an awesome job with kids and kids and, and adults alike. Uh, his type of training really gets, gets results for people that really put in the time and he's 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 taught and coached kids all the way from five years old up till you know college kids even even a few professional athletes and the my job with that was um that's why i say i wasn't the buff guy because i was not the trainer (laughs) i was the one that was handling the the business side of things the financials the um just making sure that the you know, the lights were staying on. Um, and, uh, so the biggest thing that I learned and I learned it from one of my other good buddies, uh, is the, the principle of tracking your in and out, tracking your, your revenue coming in, tracking your revenue coming out, because if you don't, those dollars can disappear. Um, and that was one of the biggest things that I learned going into the craziest thing was that that right there alone will take you from an organized business owner to a dis or from a disorganized business owner to an organized business owner is if you just track the track everything. And that's not just your dollar bills, track everything. And that's what I I'm really uh, persistent and consistent on. Uh, tracking everything that I uh, want to now, all my key indicators of how I'm successfully running my business. But the biggest thing was when I started doing that, that's when I really learned, that's when I really learned the concept (laughs) of tracking because when we started the, when I started the title company from day one, I was tracking. I had a spreadsheet and I tracked every dollar. So how, Um, how was it? How was And that's what I didn't do with the gym. So how is it for an entrepreneur who it seems like it seems like most of the time entrepreneurs are like squirrel, oh, yeah, oh yeah. shiny, oh hey, uh, how do you stop yourself from from grabbing at every single thing that comes by? I still do. <laughs> as far as but now now I'm I'm focused. You just have to so there was a time where I had I I was still doing the gym, I had an Amazon business and I had the title company. And I was, I was strung out all over the place and I was, and that's the thing is there was a time where I was going through the, oh, the shiny objects here and there and like, oh, let's be, I just want multiple streams of income and I want this and I want that. And I wasn't able to give it my all into everything that I was doing because I was just starting out. I mean, there's guys that obviously do it and they're at, you know, they're Titans of their industry and then they have little either, you know, side businesses or, or I feel like a lot of the most successful ones, they have multiple, maybe multiple streams within an industry. Whereas I had a title company, a gym and an Amazon business that were completely separate and completely <laughs> like I was all over the place and I wasn't able to fully give it my all to what I was doing. Uh, and then once I, once, once we, we shut down the gym and I, I sh- shut off my Amazon business and I was able to just focus on this, that's when my production really really took off. Was that scary to shut down those other things? No, it wasn't just because of where, where both of those were and what I just need, what I needed to do. It was just what I needed to do. And it wasn't that it was scary, but it wasn't that I wanted to do it. You know, I, I, but circumstances made it so, and it ended up working (laughs) out, um, really good for me. That's awesome. So, so coming in, you said you, you started with five, mm-hmm. right, in, in the business. 
was that six person a hire? Was that a scary hire? Have have you or take walk me through the the sca- I don't want to say the scariness. Walk me through. The, it's all about. The I know where you're going. I know where you're going. It's all about. And I live by this. And this is another Kobe principle. Um, and it's actually along the same lines of. Um, I just finished a book called The Infinite Mi- or The Infinite Game okay. by Simon Sinek, uh, and it's it's all about. The way you look at life, you either look at life scarcely or you look at it in abundance, the the abundance versus the scarcity mindset. And I get people ask me all the time, I keep hiring. I've hired four people in the last like eight months. And people always are like, well, aren't you afraid of, of the downturn? Aren't you afraid of this or that? And and so I get asked that. All, I, so I knew where your question was going because I've been asked that over this last year where I do keep hiring and I, I've expanded downstairs. If if you know my business, we've always been on the top floor mm-hmm. at 229 East St. George Boulevard, number 200. And uh, I just expanded into the downstairs. So now we have double the space, even though we don't need double the space. But right now we don't. But it's already been such a such a uh, bonus or such a good thing for us. But uh, when it comes to that, I hire as because I, I hire thinking that it's just going to keep going better and better and better. It, it could all stop tomorrow. You know, with our industry, the, what, what I'm in in real estate, you know, we're, we're so there's so many things that we can't control interest rates, uh, national economy, different things like that. But I feel like if you have a if you have an abundant mindset, especially when you're hiring, you won't be nervous about making hires that you know need to happen. Now, there have been uh, instances where I've just taken longer than I should have, but only because I'm just busy doing. I, I just I sometimes I don't stop and and focus, and I because I'm just it's one thing after another, and it's, my days are crazy. I'm all over the place, and so it, my last hire, I probably took too long, but I'm glad it worked out because it was good timing for the person that I hired and she's been awesome and it's been great. Uh, but I just feel like if you have that abundant mindset, you won't be afraid of, of hiring because it's a position needed, whether it's, whether it, because even in any, all businesses changing, especially with technology changes all the time. You just have to be able to adapt when change comes, whether it's a downturn for us in real estate, you just have to adapt the way you're, you know, the way who you're who you're marketing to and what you're doing to get business and i just feel like if you have that mindset and you give to your employees and your people with that mindset rather than holding back and saving your pennies because there's a downturn coming next month you'll live better and your your people will live better your business will do better because you are because your your people will want to if they're being taken care of they'll want to take care of your clientele so I'm guessing you Sorry, that was a rant. <laughs> that's okay. That, that Those are good things for entrepreneurs to get out, and especially for the entrepreneurs on here on Facebook Live, on the radio show, to be able to hear. Because so I think that people who are running businesses, we look at someone like McCray Hepler, and he's just going a million miles an hour, and he's just this big tyrant, and we don't think you have feelings because you're just an animal. I'm a, I'm a, no, I'm and an you, ant. And you never an stop ant. grinding. I'm trying to get there, but I'm an ant. But, but here in, in here in St. George, though, the, the tidal wave that you're causing is incredible. Especially like we're going to talk about this newsletter that you that you're doing. That is literally every person that I come in contact with are like, oh yeah, this newsletter, this newsletter that we get, it's incredible. <laughs> and so let's see, we're going to go live here in just a few minutes. So let's let's save that for the live side because I want to talk about that. Okay. Uh, so you've went from five people to eleven people. What what's the future hold for you guys? Um, I don't know. I it's it's crazy because our with our eleventh hire with um it'll be, I think we'll be, um set at least I think for a little while, and I don't I don't know. It's a hard question because there's times where I feel like I just want to keep I want to get to. I don't know how many, I mean, unlimited, you know, wherever, wherever the, it takes me. But then at the same time, um, I know it has to be controlled and I know that there has to, that everything has to be, all moves have to be made carefully. Um, so I don't actually even have an answer. I, I actually think that if, if we can, if we can 
I, I want to worry about because basically what's happening with this with our next hires we'll be creating a second team to run files right now we work as one team and it we're we're all about the team the, the i i preach team all the time because we do work as a team and i feel like teams i'm a i'm a big sports guy for anybody that knows me and i'm all about team chemistry uh and so this second team is what my focus will be sacred on. sunday Sorry about that. In getting that up and going and functioning and having everybody. And really, that's all I want to think about at this point, because I, if I think beyond that. Okay, in just one second here, we've got six seconds before we're going to actually pull in here. George. Awesome. This is KDXI St. George, Radio St. George at 100.3 FM. And we welcome you to The Peyton Fisher Show. You've seen Facebook, you've seen the media, and you think you know what's happening. Now it's time to dig deeper for the truth with your host, Peyton Fisher. Hello, everyone. Welcome. It is Tuesday, the 18th, February 2020. And I apologize if you hear me coughing in the background. I have been nasty sick for the past like three days. (laughs) It's been brutal. I can't stop. We've got too many things going on. I've got McCray Hepler here. Uh, in the in the station today from Eagle Gate Title. Super excited. We have had a fantastic 25 or so minutes previous to this. So if you want to hear what we've been talking about, and we're just going to roll right into our conversation, what we've been talking about, uh, please feel free, jump back onto our Facebook live stream and follow up on that. But McCray, real quick, give us a two-minute recap, uh, who you are, where you're from, how long you've been here in St. George, and what you do for a living. Okay. So, yeah, I'm McCray Hepler. I am from here in southern Utah. I grew up on the Black Hill, just uh, on the west side of the Black Hill, right off Valley View. I went to Dixie High. I went to Sunset Elementary. I went to Coral Cliff Sixth Grade Center. I went to Dixie Middle School, uh, finished it off at Dixie High School, and uh, did my, I got my associates through Dixie State. So I am born and bred here. I love southern Utah with all my heart. I want all my friends to move back to southern Utah. <laughs> And my goal is to, that eventually one day they will. Um, I do have some awesome friends here, though. Um, I, I love Southern Utah, like I said. I, um, I'm in the real estate world. I uh, own Eagle Gate Title. Um, so we, we're the title and escrow part of the real estate transaction, which is the um, where the closing happens. A lot of people are know, oh, yeah, I'm closing on my house next week or next month or so-and-so is closing on their house. That happens at a title company, and that is that is what I do. So. And how long have you been in the title world for? Four and a half years. August 10th of 2015 okay. was day one. And, and since this, the Peyton Fisher Show is based on entrepreneurs, are you an entrepreneur? Yes. Are you sure? I think so. <laughs> I would I, say. I have characteristics, yes. <laughs> Definitely. And, <laughs> and you've ran how many businesses? This is my second. Second business. Mm-hmm. Can I disagree with that? You ran your gym, your Amazon. Oh, sorry. Your door-to-door knocking. I guess you. I guess in a yeah. This is my fourth. Okay. Because I, I have been talking about my Amazon business and I, and I didn't even take that into account. And the the alarm business also. Well, I was a 1099, and like I said, I that's where I started my first LLC. So yeah, this is my fourth. Okay. So a lot of entrepreneurs forget sometimes how many businesses that they built up and crashed before <laughs> yeah. they actually hit one that sold. And I'm not saying you built and crashed those. Right. Uh, no, it, it's all worked out the way it's the way it's supposed to. So it's all about that learning until you find what you want. Okay? Yes. And, and I've learned a lot. <laughs> and so you remind me again, you've been in a uh, title for how long? Four and a half years. Four and a half years. And do you have a goal of staying in Eagle Gate for five more years, 20 more years? Oh. Hi there. Are we playing on air? This one? Am I supposed to be clicked on this one? Okay. Yeah. I thought we're on. Okay. Just making sure. Does it does it say we're on? Well, the thing's out there now. It's not. Okay. Is Sean is Sean there? Okay, maybe have him come yell at us. <laughs> well, at least I know we're on Facebook Live, so true. That that's see that takes us off. So we're just gonna keep rolling. That's all it. good. See what happens. Uh, yeah, no, I want this to be a lifelong thing. Uh, okay. I want to be in St. George forever, and I. Uh, 
Okay, so now we are <laughs> now we're officially live. We've been uh, blank air for a few minutes. I apologize. These buttons, I I think that I get them right every week, <laughs> guys. It takes fifteen times to to figure these out. So McCray, uh, in twenty seconds this time, you've been here how long? Which business? I'm McCray Hepler. I'm with Eagle Gate Title. I've been here my whole life. Uh, or I was born here, raised here, and uh, I'm I'm a Southern Utah guy for life okay so and let me just give a shout out to entrepreneurs who screw up a lot because in in the entrepreneur world as you can see how bright red my cheeks are (laughs) we make some stupid mistakes whether it is pushing one button or saying the wrong thing to someone or sending the wrong contract to someone this is just part of life if you don't screw up how are you supposed to learn and how are you supposed to move forward and so talk about something that you've screwed up with so that way i don't feel like i'm the only one screwing up with uh, something that you've learned from <laughs> something I've learned from a lot of things um, okay I'm gonna go to my my YouTube I've been listening to this guy uh, he is massive on be hungry and if you're not hungry his name is it says one of the greatest speeches ever and this guy has has serious um, his his last name oh it's Les Brown have you ever heard of Les Brown I have yeah and he talks about how if you're not hungry, then you're not going to make it happen. And for me, like I'm sweating right now. And I'm just, I'm totally honest with people. <laughs> like the total screw up. Oh, well, let's just keep moving forward. Let's make great hey, things happen. That's right. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about you again. Cause it's not about me. This is about you. I just felt dumb there for a few minutes. Oh, good. So back to you're building this company. You've got great things happening. I want to talk about your newsletter. What are you doing in Southern Utah that everyone likes to talk about? Because this, I hear this. I hear about this all the time. Tell yeah, me so my newsletter that I that I um, send out every month is basically just every anything and everything uh, new business, new development, new construction related. I just want to be in the know of everything, and I I am in the know of it as much as I possibly can, as early as I possibly can. Uh, I like to kind of be the groundbreaker, the the breaking news guy. And that's really what has uh, my marketing campaign that's definitely taken off for sure. So should you be doing this show and be talking about what's going on and not me? And really <laughs> me? I feel like that might be what's going on here. So I want to do something uh, in in this in this regard. Uh, but at this point, I, I send out an email. I have an email blast that I send out every month. I do videos uh, of the different developments. I have a drone that I love to fly. And um, of a really good, really good video guy, and uh, we put out some pretty cool stuff, and people like it, and it's been fun. So how uh, how first off, how does someone get involved in your newsletter? How do they find out about uh, it? Just shoot me an email or a text. My email is McCray at EagleGateTitle dot com. That's M A C R A E. Or uh, you can text me. I'll give my cell phone number out four three five six six eight seven two nine three. And and he'll we'll put this on the bottom of this link so that way you guys yeah. can reach out to McCray. Uh, but yeah, basically anything and everything that's happening in Southern Utah. There's a lot. There's so much I can't even. I it's it's crazy. I, when I started this, what's funny is I started my newsletter in 2015. Someone told me, "Hey, you should start a newsletter and use that to drip to drip or to to stay in front of real estate agents." And I'm like. I hate newsletters though. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't read newsletters. Why would I send out a newsletter? But I knew the importance of, you know, of that, of staying in front of people. So I'm like, hmm, what can I, what can I, what can I send out? So at the time I was already kind of all over the place. I was at different real estate brokerages all the time, different lenders, different. I was just trying to network wherever I could. And I was all over town and I was seeing all this stuff pop up, all these new, new restaurants, new businesses. So I was like, hmm, maybe I'll do that as an, as my newsletter. And so I just started doing it, but I was like, man, I think I'm going to run out of content at some point. Right. And it's just crazy because every single month since then, it's just been, I've been blown away at how much is coming here. And it's just been really cool to see as someone from St. George, it's really cool to see some of these new businesses, new restaurants starting to appear in Southern Utah. So tell me about how you're able to use this to be relatable to people with coming in town. So everybody just wants to, whether it's a real estate agent, um, or a builder or someone that's just moving here, um, 
that has a new business that they want to start or even new, like a new business owners, whether you're a new business owner that lives here already, or you're coming into town or just someone that wants to, I mean, I have some people, I have a lady that at least three or four emails she sends me from this like club that she's part of, of these, uh, women that just get together and play games and hang out and stuff. And people just love to see what's coming and there's construction happening literally on every corner. And it's just, you don't always know what, unless it gets to the point where there's a sign up and it says what's coming, you know, but basically I'm just a one-stop shop, my newsletter for everything happening rather than just bits and pieces here and there. So, I mean, that's pretty easy. That takes you like 15, 20 minutes a month to put together, right? No, a little <laughs> bit more than that. So talk about how much, how much time and effort you actually put into that. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's more than that. It's, uh, <laughs> the biggest thing really is, is accumulating is figuring out what's going where and figuring out who, to, who the contacts are. But at this point, everything that's happening, I, I know, some I know someone that's involved in some way. If I just go and look at look at the project, whatever's happening, I can usually find out. The other good thing is most people know that I'm looking for this now. Or if they don't see it on my newsletter, they're like, hey, I didn't see this in your newsletter. Do you know what's happening here? And I'm like, I had no idea. So then I jump right on it. Um, but it is, I mean, it is time consuming, the the videos as well. I mean, I, I spend quite a bit of time. Luckily, I have a really good video guy that puts it all together for me. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's time consuming, but it's awesome because I love it. I enjoy it. Uh, it's really fun. And the feedback that I get from it is what keeps me going with it because people really love it. And it's helped. It's just helped me meet so many, so many people, even it, w in the development world and like the city councils and the mayors and the, like I've met so many different people through it. And it's just, that's, what's been so fun about it is just meeting people through it. So do you, do you see a direct correlation in, in what you're doing with that in your business? Or is it just a way to start meeting people and talking to people and maybe one day that will correlate in your business? Yeah. I mean, I, I work with, I, I work as a, as a title company. We work with real estate agents, mortgage lenders, builders, really anybody that is involved in a real estate transaction and the value that they get from it is that in itself is what I do it for. I do it to help other people between those people and the business owners that maybe like, for example, someone that their niche or their business, they sell something that new businesses want. So they want somewhere that they don't know every new business coming into town. So then if I provide that and then they can reach out to that company and, and try and earn their business by doing whatever it is they offer, that's what I really do it for. I just love being a connector. And so, yes, it's had a direct the, the people I've met in the real estate world and the business that I've been able to, to help people do because of it has definitely made an impact on my business. And uh, the biggest thing is just, I just want it to be a value to anybody that opens it um, in some way in their life that they can either pass it on to their clients, that they can go and try and get this new business's cabinets or their, you know, anything, you know, and that's, that's the biggest thing that I really, the stories that I've heard from it, uh, has has really helped me a lot. That's awesome. So talk about um, other aspects. So that's that's one chunk of how you do in your marketing and how you're building a business. What other ways to to a younger entrepreneur in any business? What other ways are you working in your business that can help them relate? Oh, if I do this, I can make my business grow, or I can do this, I can make my business grow. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Talk about some things that you're doing to grow. Uh, networking, and really, well, the biggest thing answering your phone. Uh, I think, I think that eliminates in some, in a lot of industries that eliminates half your competition, but really the biggest thing is reliability. If you, if someone calls you and whether they're sending you business or they're asking you for something in order for them to potentially send you business or in any way you being reliable is also like answering your phone going to set you apart. But the biggest thing is networking I, I'm, I network all the time and I try and, I try and create network, network opportunities. And that's where I feel like a lot of people don't want to, because they're either scared to go network. They don't know anybody. They feel uncomfortable. T tell us what networking to you means. What does that mean? Being where other people are that are either like in your like-minded industry or where they're, they're, 
if you if you're working, let's say for me, it's business to business. Um, because I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to attract business from other real estate agents, builders, mortgage lenders that they're people, but there is business to business. I try and be at places where those people are. And I just, my, I just try and be recognizable in whatever way I can in whether it's, um, whether it's a networking event specialized for that or a, a business owner's networking, even if you create your own networking, if you go out and you say, okay, these are the people that are, that are going to get, are going to help me get business, go find those people, create your own networking group, figure out ways to make, to enhance their business. You will see it in return. Like I'm all about helping other people. If I can help other people achieve what they want to get by, and that's why I love being a connector. And I just try and I try and get to know someone in every single industry. So that way, when someone asks me, Hey, do you know a plumber or Hey, do you know an an electrician or Hey, do you know whoever, whoever it is, I can refer them. And I know that when that person finds out that I referred them or however it works out, I know it's going to come back to me because, and that's just, that's how I see networking okay is is meeting people and then trying to find out how to help them with their business don't even don't focus on yourself so how do you get over being scared about that i mean are, are you the type of do you have the personality where you might get scared about going to an event or you're nervous what if i say something i still dumb? do i still do i i if i go to a, if i go somewhere i don't see anybody that i know there's still a, a part of me that just wants to stay in the corner and and just kind of sit there until I can see someone that I know. But really, it's just jumping out. And some of the best conversations I've had are the times that I was scared to approach somebody. And that's really how it is with anything. When I used to knock doors, it'd be 8.30 at night. We're supposed to knock till 9. And it would be 8.30, 8.45 at night. And I'd be like, you know what? I've knocked 100 doors today. Like, I'm fine. And there was nights that I did that. Cause I would be like, I'd be scared to knock another door for some reason. But then the times that I'd be like, no, I need to go hit one more door. I, that deal, I would get the deal. And then something there was, I had a few crazy instances where I was like, you know what? One more door. Like that's all I needed to ever do was one more door. And the amount of deals that I got because of that was, was substantial. Um, but it's all about, it's all about getting over that fear because my fear at that point was knocking on someone's door too late. They were putting their kid to bed or they were, you know, bath time or whatever. But, and there were times where I did make someone mad. I did, (laughs) but I was, I tried to be respectful about it. And, and, um, but really in, in anything that fear of, um, that fear of rejection in however way it is, that's what keeps us from wanting to approach somebody. But some of the best conversations and some of the best deals I ever have had have been when I've just launched myself. That's all it is. So talk about, again, you said that you like to help other people. Yes. But don't you want their business? Yeah. So isn't it – Can do you think that those people can feel you like, oh, I just – he just wants my business. That's all – he just wants to be my friend so we can have my business because I know that, that's a bit – that's a big thing as, as entrepreneurs. They're like, well, if I go talk to them, they just know I want their business. Right. No, I mean there at this point, I mean how do I say it? I don't try and I don't, I don't try, how do I say it? I don't try and sell myself. I really don't. I, people know what I do. I bring up what I do. I let them know that I'm a, I, I don't know. I, I guess if I'm talking to a real estate, so there's people, most people don't know what a title company is. So the people that I market to or the ones that know that, I'm, you know, I want their business are real estate agents, uh, mortgage lenders and builders, like I've, like I've said, and investors. Um, some, you know, maybe sometimes with those people, they might feel that way. Like, oh, he's just trying to help me out because, you know, he wants my business, but I just don't even think about that. I don't think about them thinking that if I think, if I'm thinking that they're thinking that there's probably an issue. (laughs) And I just think about, I think about what ways I can truly help them. And there's been times where I've done stuff for people for years 
And I never got their business and I never asked for it. Or I never was like, hey, by the way, like I'm doing this for you. Why don't you do it? Why don't you give me a deal back? Like I've, but it's, there's people that I've earned their business over time and now I'm starting to work with them that I hadn't for years. But it's just because I've been consistent in showing my face and I've been consistent in letting them, you know, giving them ways, giving them value without really asking for anything in return. And that's just, my business other different businesses are different but in my world um i i just don't ask for it um they know i want it but i just try and provide a value and i try to provide a service without the hey i'm doing this for you i i want something in return because i don't i get rubbed the wrong way when people are like that with me and i just (laughs) i've never wanted to be like that okay that's cool and maybe i've missed out on opportunities to work with people because i wasn't that way but I've also been able to earn people's trust in business by not being that way. So that sounds a little bit more like the abundance mindset rather yeah. than just the scarcity. Right. And that's where, and that's what I was alluding on before was when I was hired, when, you know, when you're hiring or, and whatever, whatever you're doing when you're growing your business or running a business or anything in life, you can either have an abundant mindset or you can have a scarcity mindset. The abundant mindset is there's, there's enough for everybody. There's enough. Then there's not. There's not a. Uh, there's not a limit uh, on potential. When you're living scarcely, everything is limited. There's only so much of everything, and you have to get yours. And you you care about yours, and that's all you care about. When you're abundantly living, you care about everybody else around you. And th- th- so, yeah, in this regard, it, if you live abundantly, you don't have to act that way. You don't have to put off that vibe did you did you always live in this abundant quote mindset or is this just been a last few years or how how's this played in your business honestly my parents i think uh really like on un- maybe not even intentionally they really sunk this in me from when i was a kid because my parents are the most giving unconditional loving people that there are and they've just always you know they they've never been like they've just, they've always, no matter who it is, where it is, what the situation is, they give no matter what. And so I've just always tried to live up to their, to their standards and tried to live after their example. And I think if you have that giving mindset, that just translates very easily into, well, it is an abundant mindset because if you're giving, giving, giving and not worrying about the return. And that's the thing is they've just never worried about their return. And that right there is the abundant mindset, giving, giving, giving without expecting a return. And some people might say, oh, you're going to run out of money if you give it all away. Well, John Huntsman or not John Huntsman, one of the Huntsmans that already passed away gave away 80% of his, of his income. And I, I just, I think that if, if you live with an abundant mindset, if you give, 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 you're going to get in return without, and, but you, it's not that you think about what you're going to get in return, but it's just, it's going to come. Okay. So we've got about two minutes left here. I want you to tell us about one of the most influential books that you've ever read and why we should read it. Okay. On the, uh, if we're just along the same, the same infinite, the infinite game, um, which it is business related, it's business, but you can also, anybody can read it. And it really just talks about living with an infinite mindset versus an, uh, uh, let's see, infinite mindset versus a finite ma- mindset. And it really is a dr- almost a direct correlation of scarcity versus abundant. Um, but it, I would highly recommend. That one really hit me, and I just finished it last week. Who wrote it? Simon Sinek. Did he write Start With Why? Start With Why and uh, Eaters, or Eaters, leaders eat, eat, leaders eat Last. Okay. And I haven't read those two. But- the infinite game really, uh, it really, it, it, uh, the biggest thing was it made me feel good about the, a lot of the ways that I am living, but it also helped me to realize in what more ways I can give even more and not worry about myself because it talks about the, the thing that it correlates with business is that like in sports and I'm a big sports guy, but in sports, there's a winner and a loser. And uh, in a lot of today's world, people think about winning and losing. If I'm winning, someone else has to be losing. But he said in business, if you think that way, that is the finite way of thinking in business. That If you're winning, someone else has to be losing, whether that's a competitor or whether that's 
the business owner that's saying, wow, I'm not making my money this month. Mm -hmm. My, and that the employees have to lose in order for the owner to win, for example. Well, thank or, you, McCray. That Anyway, no, so yeah. That's a great way to, to wrap this up. We really appreciate you coming in. Uh, thank you. That appreciate is a great it. book. We need to put that on the post on the bottom, so make sure and text me that. We'll get the that info on there. Game. Infinite Game. And remember, Thursday night this week at 6 p.m. at the Allies Building, we are going to be holding Training for Greatness, uh, some great things to do to, to learn how to become great. So, again, this is Peyton Fisher, Radio St. George. Have a fantastic Tuesday. You've been listening to The Peyton Fisher Show. Relive this show on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and at RadioStGeorge.com. Join us next Tuesday at 3 o'clock for another edition of The Peyton Fisher Show.